Good evening, ma'am. My name is Jelamy Franklin, and today I'm going to demonstrate to you how to insert a nasal gastric tube feeding and removal of the NGT tube. First, let me define what is NGT or nasal gastric tube. A nasal gastric tube is a pliable tube that is inserted through the client's nasal pharynx into the stomach and it has a hollow lumen that allows the removal of gastric secretions and the introduction of solution in the stomach. There are four main purposes of the insertion of nasal gastric tube. First is to administer tube feeding and medication for patients who are unable to swallow by mouth or eat sufficient diet without aspirating food and fluid in the lungs. Second is to establish a means of suctioning stomach contents to prevent distension, nausea, and vomiting. Third is to remove stomach contents for laboratory analysis. Fourth is to lavage or wash the stomach in case of poisoning or overdosage. The materials that we need for the nasal gastric tube insertion are as follows. We need our stethoscope. We also need our acepto syringe. We need sterile disposable gloves. Plus, we also need tissues, kidney basin, adhesive tapes, towel, restraint or hand mitts in case we need to restrain a child or a person. We also need our tongue blade, a glass of water with straw. We need the nasogastric tube using the right size according to the doctor's order and also our safety pins. Assessment. There are a few things we have to do. Number one is we have to assess the patient's need for a nasogastric tube or nasoenteric tube, such as surgeries including the GI tract, impaired swallowing, or loss of consciousness. The nasogastric tube or nasoenteric tube will decrease the risk for aspiration for these kind of patients. Second under assessment is we need to check the physician's order. Checking the physician's order is very important so we would know the type of tube to use, the size, the purpose of the insertion, whether it's for feeding or for suctioning, and also for legality purposes. Third under assessment is to assess gag reflex. Assessing gag reflex is very important because the absence of gag reflex would mean an increased risk for aspiration. If the gag reflex is absent, we should not continue with the insertion. Next, we also have to assess our patient's mental status or the patient's ability to cooperate. Now, by doing so, we will be able to plan for necessary reinforcements or also for easier giving of instructions. The fifth item under the assessment is to determine the location of the materials because some materials are, can be located in the unit or some might be ordered in the central services. This is to save time and effort. Planning. For planning, number one, we have to wash our hands for the infection control. The GI tract is non-sterile, hence using clean technique is acceptable. Second under planning is to gather and prepare all the materials that we need and as well as our equipment. The plastic tube must be soaked in a basin of warm water for 10 minutes, that is to soften that, and the rubber tube must be soaked in a basin of ice for 10 minutes. Doing this will help us avoid damaging the mucosa. Meanwhile, the small bore tube, we have to use a stylet or a guide wire and position it properly. Failing to position this properly can contribute to traumatizing the mucosa. Next under planning is to plan for assistance if necessary. Even though the patient may be alert, awake, or cooperative, the presence of somebody, be it a medical personnel or a loved one of the patient, might be appreciated by the patient. Implementation. The first thing under implementation is to identify our patient. Introduce yourself and get the complete name and birth date of our patient plus verify it using the wristband. Good morning, Sir Ted. I am Jelly Franklin. I'll be your nurse today. May I know your complete name and birth date? Uh huh. Okay, well, can I check your wristband? Okay. 
Thank you. After verifying the complete name and birth date of our patient, the next step on their implementation is to explain the procedure to our patient and the reason why. Upon explaining the procedure to our patient, we have to tell that it will be a little bit uncomfortable, but taking deep breaths or relaxing himself or herself would greatly help. So Ted, your doctor has ordered that we must insert a nasogastric tube to your stomach. This procedure will be a little bit uncomfortable, but if you take deep breath and just relax yourself, it will greatly help us. Inserting this tube is very important because you are unable to swallow food that your body needs. The tube will help us to give you the medication and the nutrients that your body needs for faster recovery. So after explaining to the patient the procedure and also the reason why, we may now place the patient in high folders position if it's not contraindicated. Putting the patient in high folders position is actually a way of using the gravity to help us during the insertion. The gravity can make it easier. Under the implementation, you have to put a clean towel on the patient's chest that's to prevent the linen and the gown from getting soiled. Also, we have to prepare the tape for later application. We need to wipe the patient's nose using a cotton with alcohol to remove the excess oil. Since the nose is naturally oily, wiping it can increase the tape adhesion later on. Next under implementation is to assess the patency of the nair. We can use a pen light to check if there's any obstruction inside the patient's nose. So Ted, I'm going to check your nose if there's any obstruction. Alright, good. Or another way is to let the patient blow air from the nose. So first we have to cover the first side of the nose and then let the patient blow and then check the other side as well. So Teddy, I'm going to cover your nose. Please blow air. Let's see. Okay, all right. And how about the next side? There you go. All right. Well, this will help us to choose which side of the nose to insert the tube. Next, under implementation, we need to have the kidney basin on the side of our patient and as well as the glass of water with the straw. Sir Teddy, you are going to sip and swallow water from this glass with the straw later on to help us with the insertion. Okay, so we can have that ready on the side of our patient. So we can now put on our gloves. Before we put in our gloves, as we open the container, we could actually use the sterile side to pour the jelly, the water lubricant jelly. Using the sterile side would allow us to control the infection. All right, so let's proceed with putting on our gloves. After putting on our gloves, the next thing to do is to determine how far the tube is going or to measure the length of our nasogastric tube and that is by measuring the tip of the nose to the tip of the earlobe and also connecting it to the xiphoid process. That will help us to approximate the distance or the desired distance of our tube. Okay, so from the tip of the nose Now, mark this side with a tape as our indication of how far we will be going or we will be, insert, we will be inserting this to our patient's stomach. Doing this will allow us to approximate the distance that we need to insert the tube to reach the desired area. For nasoenteric tube, we just have to add 8 to 10 centimeters of our nasogastric tube measurements. But of course, this will vary. After that, we may now lubricate the tip of the tube using our water-soluble lubricant. Water-soluble lubricant will just get dissolved if the tube is accidentally inserted into the lungs, hence it will not cause complications. Now that your tube is well lubricated, 
we may now gently um we may now gently insert the tip of the tube we should have the patient's head hyperextend because that will flatten the curve of the nasal passage where it meets with the pharynx we have to use gentle pressure and we should not force against resistance because forcing against resistance will damage the mucosa. Dr. Teddy, I'm going to insert now the tube to your nose. Please hyperextend your neck like this. Okay, all right. Please hyperextend your neck. Okay. After reaching the nasopharynx, we have to flex the patient's head to the chest. That will close the trachea and also make sure that the tube is in the right direction. So Ted, please flex your head close to your chest like this. Okay, alright. Let's now rotate the tube 180 degrees. Doing that will redirect the tube into the back of the throat and avoid entering the mouth. After doing that, direct the patient to sip water and advance the tube 10 centimeters in every swallow. Doing that will ease the insertion because of the normal peristalsis. So Ted, please sip and swallow water. Okay. There will be a temporary gagging, but that would subside after you advance the tube. Once the tube is in, we need to tape the tube temporarily. Now that the tube is temporarily taped, we can now verify placement. But before that, we need to make sure that the end of the lumen is kinked and closed. That is to avoid the air from going in the patient's stomach and causing distension. The next thing under implementation is to check the tube in the mouth using a tongue depressor. So Ted, please open your mouth. Okay, let's see if the tube is in. Alright, good. So, after doing that, we may now proceed with the other ways of verifying our placement. There are four ways that we could verify our tube placement. The first one is using the chest x-ray, which is not often done because radiation is harmful for the body. Second is to auscultate for berberine sound. Now, to auscultate for berberine sound, we would need our stethoscope ready. Okay, and also, we have to use our acepto syringe. Now, before we open the end of the lumen, we need to make sure that it is kinked. That way, we are preventing the air from going in and causing this tension. So insert now the acepto syringe. And let go of the kink. Alright. Now... Put the diaphragm over the epigastric area to listen for the berberine sound as we introduce 10 to 15 ml of air in the patient's stomach. Okay, and the berberine sound should be clearly heard if the tube is properly in in the stomach. Now, Another way to verify our placement is to aspirate the pH content. To aspirate for pH content, we have to remember to kink the tube. We don't need to remove the acepto syringe since it's already here. So kink, remove the cover. Now press the cover to create a suction effect later on. And then we can put this back. Put the cover back. Let go of the kink. And release the cover as you release the cover you should be able to see some of the gastric contents being sucked or pulled inside the aseptic syringe now that we have the aspirated content inside the aseptic syringe we can now check the ph level now we will know if it's in the stomach because the ph level of the stomach should be one to five and beyond that it would mean that it is not in the right the direction or it is not in the right location remove the acepto syringe and make sure to 
kink and close it back and test the pH level for the aspirated content. After verifying the position of our tube, we have to tape the tube securely. That's by removing the temporary tape that we used earlier and place the other tape plus the tape with the slit. And then after that, you could use another tape on top of the permanent tape that we use. Furthermore, we have to keep the end or the lumen plug at all times. Secure the tubings, coil the free end, and then pin it to the clothing. Pinning it to the clothing will make sure that the tube will not be dislodged upon movement. Next under implementation is to put the patient in a comfortable position that will make the patient feel better and alleviate anxiety. So Ted, you did very well during our insertion. Let's put you in a more comfortable position. After putting the patient in a comfortable position, we need to make sure to provide frequent oral nasal care because the patient's mouth and nose is expected to be a bit irritated since the patient is not breathing through the nose, more so that the patient is not eating using the mouth. So oral nasal care is very important. Next, we have to dispose our gloves and wash our hands for infection control. After that, we have to do an aftercare and return all the materials that we have used. Evaluation. For evaluation, the very first thing is we have to assess the patient's tolerance during the procedure. Is there any discomfort, coughing, or gagging? Also, for evaluation, we have to note the color, consistency, and the pH of the aspirate. Next, we have to ask the patient if he is comfortable. Sir Teddy, are you feeling comfortable? Okay, that's great. Documentation. For the documentation, we have to initiate intake and output record. Also, we have to document the type and size of the tube that was inserted. Furthermore, we have to document the amount and characteristic of the drainage. Next, we need to document our patient's response after the procedure. Lastly, we have to add to nursing care plan the information for care needed. And that would be all for the nasogastric tube insertion. Let's now proceed to nasogastric tube feeding. The materials that we need are as follows. We need our feeding formula, warm is indicated, drinking water, stethoscope, and towel. Assessment. The first thing we need to do in the assessment is to check the physician's order. We need to know the specific formula that we have to prepare and the water plus the time that we have to give the feeding. Next under assessment is to read the chart for previous observations on feeding. We need to do this to check our patient's tolerance of the procedure. The next thing under assessment is to wash our hands. Washing our hands is very important for infection control. After that, we have to determine whether the patient is to be using reservoir, acepto, or pre-filled method. Planning. The very first thing under planning is to wash our hands for infection control. Next. 
we need to decide whether we have to use reservoir, a sato, or pre-filled method. Next is to gather the equipment that we need to save time and effort. Implementation. The very first thing under implementation is to identify our patient to make sure that we are doing the procedure to the correct patient. Introduce your name, obtain the patient's complete name and birth date, as well as checking their wristband. Hello, Sir Teddy. My name is Jelly Franklin, and I'll be your nurse today. May I know your complete name and birth date, sir? Mm, okay. Now, can I check your wristband? All right. Thank you so much. Next under implementation is to explain the patient what we will be doing and also inform the patient to let you know as soon as possible if he feels like vomiting, then we can stop the feeding. Sir Teddy, your doctor has instructed to give you this formula for your feeding and if you feel like vomiting, please let me know as soon as possible, that way we can stop the feeding immediately. Okay. Next under implementation is to place the patient in a semi-fowler's position. Placing the patient in a semi-fowler's position will allow us to let gravity to aid us during the feeding. And also, the next thing to do is to drape our patient's chest with a towel to prevent the linen and the gown from getting soiled. Next under implementation is to test the placement of the tube and for a seed well formula since it may have been dislodged in between feedings. To check the placement, first we can inspect the tube. After inspecting the tube, we can now auscultate for berberine sound. To auscultate for berberine sound, we have to make sure to kink the tube, open the lumen as we insert the accept the syringe, put the stethoscope, and then pump or introduce 5 to 10 ml of air. Place the diaphragm over the epigastric area. So after checking the berberine sound, we can now aspirate for residual volume. To aspirate for residual volume, we have to remember to kink the tube. And since the septic syringe is already here, then no need to remove it. Just remove the cover, press to create a suction effect, and then let go of the kink and measure the residual volume. Kink. Open the cover. Press the cover. Put it back to create a suction or a vacuum effect. Let go of the kink. And then check the aspirate and measure the residual volume. Measuring the residual volume will help us to check how much feeding to give if the physician order 110 ml of feeding and if there is a 10 ml of residual volume here, we can just deduct the amount of aspirate which is 10 ml from the 110 ml of order. So it means that we may give 100 ml feeding to our patient. After that, we have to put the receivable volume back by pumping slowly our aseptic syringe. Okay. So put it back by pushing it gently or slowly. After putting back the receivable volume, we have to flush 10 ml of water that is to clear the blockage along the tube. The total flushing, the total water that we have to flush is 30 ml. We have to do three times flushing before the feeding, in between feedings, and after the feeding. Next, if you're using a septo syringe method, we should just hold the syringe manually, fill and refill again. Do not allow the water or formula to fall below the bottom of the syringe because that will carry air and cause distension. To proceed with flushing, the same rule applies. 
kink the tube properly to avoid the air from entering. Open the cover. And then, put 10 ml of water in the septo syringe. And slowly, let go of the kink and let the gravity carry the water inside the tube. All right, and kink right away. Don't let the water fall at the end of septa syringe since it will carry air and cause this tension. After flushing, we can now proceed with our feeding. And remember to tell the patient that if he feels like vomiting, to tell you immediately so we can stop the process. So Ted, I'm going to proceed now with the feeding. Please, if you feel like vomiting, tell me right away and sh we shall stop the feeding, okay? To proceed with the feeding, we have to remember to kink the tube, open the lumen, and insert the septo syringe, and then open the cover for the formula. Since the septo is already here, all we have to do is to kink the tube properly to avoid the air from going in there and causing this tension. Open the cover and put the warm formula. Let go of the kink and let the gravity take the formula in the tube. And kink it back. Avoid air from going in there. And in between feedings, we also have to flush 10 ml of water to get rid of the blockage. Let go of the kink. And kink it back and go on with your feeding again. Let go of the kink and kink it back. Now, let's proceed to the last flushing. The last 10 ml must be flushed in the tube to get rid of any possible blockage that might have stayed during your feeding. Kink it back and cover. After the feeding, clamp the tube or plug it and pin the tube to patient's clothes. Kink. Remove the septo syringe. Lock your tube or your lumen. And then we can pin it back to our patient's clothes to avoid it from being dislodged as the patient moves later on. Next under implementation is to reposition our patient to low folders position. And if the patient is comatose, we have to put the patient on one side to prevent aspiration. So Teddy, let's put you in a low folders position. Next under implementation is to wash your hands. That's for infection control. Do aftercare and return all the materials used. Evaluation. For evaluation, we need to return to the patient in approximately 30 minutes. That's to make sure that the feeding has been retained. Documentation. For documentation, we need to record on medication sheet or progress notes the date, time, type, amount of formula, amount of water, and the patient's response, and including the intake and output monitoring. That would be all for the nasogastric tube feeding. Let's proceed to the nasogastric tube removal procedure. The materials that we need for the nasogastric tube removal are clean gloves, paper towels, towel, oral hygiene tray. Assessment. First, we have to verify that the tube is not needed anymore by checking the physician's order. Next is to obtain tissue paper for handling and covering soiled tube. Next, we have to gather and prepare all the equipment that we will be needing for this procedure to save time and effort. Implementation. First, identify the patient. This will let us make sure that we are removing the nasogastric tube on the correct patient. 
Hello, Sir Teddy. My name is Jelly Franklin, and I'll be your nurse today. May I know your complete name and birth date? All right. May I check your wristband? All right. Thank you. Next under implementation is to explain the procedure to the patient. Let the patient know that it will be a little bit uncomfortable, but it will be over quickly. Sir Teddy, today your doctor has ordered the removal of your nasal gastric tube since you have recovered and may now allow to swallow food using your mouth. It will be a little bit uncomfortable, but it will be over quickly, so taking deep breath and relaxing yourself will greatly help. Next under implementation is to drape the patient's chest using a clean towel. That is to prevent the linen and the gown from getting soiled. If suction is operating, we need to turn it off to avoid discomfort and we have to disconnect the tube. Put on gloves for infection control. After putting on gloves, we have to pinch the tube close or plug it. That's to prevent acids from leaking. Our stomach is secreting hydrochloric acid, which is really uncomfortable. So to prevent that, we need to pinch the tube close. The next step is to remove the tape. Coil the free end using our dominant hand, and we have to use a tissue to withdraw the tube in a smooth yet continuous motion to avoid gag reflex. Place a soiled tube in a paper towel and cover it, and you may now remove your gloves. Next, under implementation, is to provide comfort to our patients and give mouth care to remove secretions in oral cavity. Next, measure the secretions in collection container. That's to record as output. Then, we have to dispose the equipment and gloves properly. That's to prevent cross-contamination. Wash our hands properly and do aftercare. We have to evaluate using two things. First, if the patient is comfortable. Second, there's no abdominal distension. Documentation. We have to document the time the tube was removed, the amount and description of materials in the collection container, and as well as the patient's response. And that's it for the nasal gastric tube removal. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye!